All right, hey everybody. This is week two of how to create a magnetic as fuck high ticket offer that aligns your clients and sells. So this week we are talking about how to align and activate your high ticket offer. Last week we talked about the foundation that you actually need. And that was like the most crucial step that I see a lot of people skip. They wanna get right into making money. They wanna get right into getting clients. They wanna get right into doing the thing, but they're missing the essential part that actually connects you to your clients. And so if you missed last week's, go ahead and make drop a comment below um, or reach out to me and I will tag you in that replay so that you can watch it because that really is the first step for you to get that foundation really solid. And this week we're going to talk about how to align and activate your high ticket offer so it really connects to your clients and it's really something that they need. So much I see with my clients is this um, need to create an offer that doesn't actually fulfill a need or isn't actually the thing that your clients are asking for. And so last week when we talked in the first week about creating that solid foundation, I had you do a homework assignment. And the homework assignment was go out and talk to five people, do some market research around like what they actually are struggling with and what they actually need as far as support in their work, in their business, okay? So when you get those responses, I want you to look at them pretty critically and I want you to see like what are the patterns here? If you're doing more than five, it's even better. So I will do research calls even still. I always do them because I want to see what people are actually struggling with. Okay. Most of the time it's sales. Most of the time it's clients. Most of the time it's how do I be consistent? Stuff like that for me. And so for you, what are your clients actually saying that they're struggling with? And I want you to put that down on paper so you can actually identify what those patterns are. And if you're asking the right questions on those market research calls, asking them like what they think they could actually need to actually be successful or to get the information or to get the result that they're asking for. Okay. So if those are the questions that you're asking, you're able to see like, Oh, they really need accountability or, Oh, maybe they need somebody to show them how, or, Oh, they need this specific thing that's specific to you and your niche. Okay. So now that you kind of have an understanding of kind of the basic framework of what your clients are struggling with, you're going to make sure that your a lot, your offer aligns with that. You don't want to create an offer that has all these fancy points to it and has all the support and all these things that you create all, spend all your time creating and then realize that it doesn't sell because it doesn't actually click. And so that's kind of the issue that I see with my clients is that, um, or with my other colleagues is that they have, they have offerings, they have programs, but it's not really the thing that people are asking for, right? Um, and it, it just makes sense, right? It just makes sense. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to break down the five point system that I use to really create an offer that works and that sells. And this is, like I said, it depends and really hinges on what those market research calls tell you and what your audience is actually telling you. So if you think, you know, I bet you anything you don't know. And here's why I say that is because there were so many times where I'll give you an example. Back when I first had my very, 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 very first coaching client, never forget this. I had a whole program all about um, embodiment and how to love your body. And I was a transformational life coach and I really focused on integrating like what the body has to say, um, what the intelligence of the body um, is bringing to the surface and how, you know, there's a disconnect between the heart and the mind and how we can really ground down in a body. And I'll never forget my first client. I was sitting there telling her all about my program. My program is so excited. And I was so excited. And I thought I knew, right? I thought I knew what my clients needed. I had already talked to some people, um, but I didn't really understand the, the things that they were telling me um, as things that they actually needed in a program. And here's what I mean by that is, so I'm sitting there with the client and we're having our first, pro uh, first coaching call. <clears throat> and I'm going on about emotional intelligence in the body and how the body has a lot of things to say. And I said, yeah, you got a lot of limiting beliefs that may be holding you back. And when I said that, she looked at me and she's like, interesting. I don't know what that is. And I said, what do you mean? You know what that is? What, what, what exactly did you, did you not understand what that? And she said, I don't know what a limiting belief is. So we think you and I, as people who work with clients assume <laughs> that our clients know something or know what we think they need to know. They actually just want to come back down to like the bare basics of what they're asking for specifically to your offer. So like in my offering about embodiment, she wanted to go through like, what the hell is the limiting belief? What is this? So like it ended up changing my focus and thing is I changed my program to tailor it to her. 
Otherwise, I would have gone off on like this tangent of things that she had no interest on because she doesn't even know what a limiting belief is. How is she going to understand what emotional intelligence of the mind and body is? She doesn't even understand that connection yet. So I realized that I need to go back into educating, educating my clients into limiting beliefs, understanding what the body's responses are, understanding emotions, understanding, and really going all the way back. And my program was much more effective. I was able to sign way more clients quickly because I was targeting the actual issues that my clients were struggling with. So if you're creating a program that you think it's all over here, right? And I'm creating all this information that's gonna be so great. This isn't actually the thing that they're struggling with. You're not gonna get clients to sign with your program. It doesn't matter how good it is, okay? You really have to understand what they're actually wanting. And that's the difference is that creating programs just to create them doesn't make any sense. So you really want to make a program that aligns with your clients and really activate what they're needing. That's why I said align and activate your high ticket for today. Okay. So step one, let's go to step one. Step one, we want to go back to the why. Now I know I probably harp on this all the time and I will harp on this forever because if once you really get clear on why everything else falls into place. Okay, the strategy, the how, everything is much easier. And I promise you this is the case once you start clicking this into your brain. So the why we talked about last week about like your mission, this is the why of your offering. Okay, why you're doing your offer in the first place. Like why did you create this offer? What does it solve for your clients? What is that solution to those questions that you ask on the market research calls, those five people that it provides? Okay, so why is all about why is this program effective? Why is this going to bring them to X and Y transformational result? Why is it allowing them to feel embodied? Why is this helping them with their boundaries? Why is this bringing them to learn how to find more clients? Like, why is this something that they actually need? Now, that question may seem really simple, but you have to dive deeper into what the clients are really struggling with. And now when you're on the research calls, again, like this is like the most effective homework that you could probably ever do ever in your business. And you will continue to do it. I promise you every good business coach will tell you this because it's about understanding your client. So when you're asking those questions and you went through your interviews with your clients, go through their answers and listen to what you wrote down around what it is that they're actually desiring. Okay what they're actually wanting what are they actually needing and the wording the language is super super important and this helps you when you're writing copy for your offers as well and also as well as like writing your social media posts and emails of just connecting with your clients what are they actually asking for this is the reason why you created that offer okay like for example my very first client the reason why she signed up to me signed up with me was because she was in a lot of pain and she wanted to get rid of the pain, but she more than anything, and this is what came through during our time together, really just wanted to feel like herself again. She wanted to feel normal. She wanted to feel free. She wanted to feel um, like she wasn't a chronic sufferer. She didn't have a label of anything. She wanted to feel like she was herself, right? She was a normal self all over again. And so when you're creating that why for this offering, that offering would all be around uh, like understanding the pain so that you can be you, right? Like that is the why, like that's the whole purpose. And for many of us, that sounds way too simple. Okay. That sounds way too simple. Like the reason why some people hire me is because they want to learn how to get clients. It's not because they will learn how to set up automations and like figure out email funnels and like understand how to organically lead gen people or connect or create content or blah, blah, blah. That's not why. The why is you want to get clients. You see what I'm saying? So this is like really like brass tacks, the information that you really want to get to that's like piercing the heart of like why are you even doing what you're doing so again the why of why you're creating this offer what is like the true reason why your clients are asking and you're providing this solution you're providing that solution to the need okay so the first off is why 
Now, secondly, you really want to dive into like the what of your service. And this is where the what is like the name of your service and what it does for the client. Now, the why is really all about, like I said, um, what that desired end goal. The what is like all of this in between. Okay. This is like how we get to feeling free and pain free to getting actual clients and having a really successful business, to having amazing boundaries, to understanding your relationship with the divine, like all of that why, right? All of this is the what. So let's talk about the what, okay? The what is all about those essential framework steps that they need to take to get to where they go. Now, this isn't just like any steps that you think is helpful, okay? Like you are obviously going to be your own expert, your own genius in your work. You're going to know kind of like what, how to, like what you did to get to where they need to go or what the steps are, right? But you also need to understand what their, the clients, again, struggle with. Like this all go back to the client, guys. If you're creating content and you just think, and no one's engaging with it, sometimes, yeah, it's just a bad day. And sometimes it's like, maybe this isn't what they actually need. Maybe this isn't actually what they're struggling with. Maybe this isn't actually like the steps that they need on their journey. Again, when we go back to my first example, that first client, <laughs> she needed first to understand limiting beliefs. We weren't ready to all the way over here. She couldn't make that leap. Okay. If you think of it as a bridge and here's the transformation and they're starting at Suck Island, right? Like this whole distance is a lot. So it's like little steps all the way to get to where they want to be. And if you're jumping to the middle, they're not going to be able to understand that. They're not going to be able to make that. So you really have to understand like, what's the first thing that they're really struggling with. And so when you're on those calls with them on the market research calls, really look into seeing, okay, what is it, what is it that they're really having a problem with? Okay. Maybe they have a problem connecting to their body. That was definitely my issue with my first, um, with my first clients is like, they're having connection the connection to their body is kind of broken. They don't understand it. Maybe they don't like it. They don't, they don't feel it. Um, so understanding how to do that first, right? How to understand the pain. I mean, that was a huge part. And that seems so simple, but that was the first step, right? So for you, what is those um, stair steps that get them to that final result, that final transformation, that awesome island, okay? And lay those out. And now if you don't know, and this is what usually I get questions on, is like, if you don't know what those steps are, you're going to do more calls with people. Okay. <laughs> and here's why I mean that, because you need to understand exactly where people are. Not every client starts in the same place. Okay. So some people like can, like I, like that first client, she didn't understand the connection. She didn't understand what living beliefs were. It was very much like starting at the very beginning. Right. You're going to get clients who are not quite there. They're here, right? And that's okay. So now you know, like, okay, they're here. I know how to work with them from this space and forward, right? So being able to understand exactly where they are in that process. And this is where you can go back on a call and talk to them about like, okay, you know, if, the, if my example for a transformational life coach was to get them to really love their bodies and understand their bodies are working for them and to be pain free because you transform that like experience of pain in the body as well as finding actual solutions to mitigate that pain. There's a continuum here. So we need to figure out where they are on that journey, how that experience is for them, what that looks like for them. And so for you really understanding that for your client. Okay. Understand that for your client because they don't all start in the same place. Okay. So really understanding the what going back to that framework and what are the steps. And so I would suggest you writing down like your protocol, your strategy, your method that you've created of bringing people to awesome Island, figure out like what are like the natural steps that you feel and then go back on those market research calls, do some more and check in and see like, is this accurate? Like, does this make sense? Like, can, and you can kind of walk them through that as well. If you really want to get that good feedback, if you, especially if you've never had a client go through your program before yet. Um, if you have had clients go through your program, what I would say is go back and get them on a, um, again, like a market research discovery call just to see how it felt for them. Okay. Because I promise you, when you get back on that call with those past clients, you can see like what actually was helpful. And every time the things that you think were helpful 
were probably not the same things that they thought were helpful. Um, meaning like you probably are amazing at what you do and I'm sure everything that you're offering that was fantastic, but we all have personal experiences of like what really changed our lives, right? Like I had a coach that had that said this one thing, did this one type of strategy with me and it blew my mind, changed my business forever, right? It wasn't technically like the big overarching thing of the program, but that one piece was what I was really missing. Okay. So that information is invaluable for you to understand that like those clients really can um, really understand where they're at and like what parts of your program really feel aligned. And if you've never, again, never, never delivered your program yet, and you have a brand new program that you're trying out, I would walk this through with a couple of people and see like the journey of like how they need to get to go. Because I'm sure if you're like, okay, well, how about like, what would it feel like if you, we started at the beginning here with the data? Cause you said you're struggling with, you know, understanding your body. We get you to understand your body. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Then like we'd move into, you know, doing this and then the other, uh, maybe tuning into this and tuning into, yeah. But what I really struggle with is this. I hear that all the time when I used to do market research calls, like very, like a lot more in the beginning, like the, I would say this thing and they'd be like, yeah, but this is a thing that I'm really struggling with. Okay. Well, let's put that in as that third step or fourth step or fifth step, because that's clearly what the thing that I've been hearing over and over again. And so the cool thing is that your offers become even better. They become even more magnetic because you're hitting the stuff that people are actually wanting to see, right? They're actually wanting to get, they're actually wanting to, to receive. And so again, understanding your what breakdown framework, run it through with your past clients and see, ask them like what parts of this program was really most effective for you. And if you don't have clients in your, in your program and it's brand, brand new, I would actually run this through with some potential clients on a market research call and see how it feels. Okay. It's totally doable. It helps you get you some immense um, return on like your time. And you may actually get some people who are absolutely interested in what you do. Okay. So that's number two was what. Number three was how. How is a pretty easy one, but I also want you guys to, 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 to understand a couple of things. Um, and I'm going to say this with love because I've had experience in this industry for so long in the coaching industry that it really aggravates me. <laughs> so we're going to talk about this. So how is really the deliverables? Okay. This is like the things that you do to deliver the support. So maybe you're doing weekly calls, maybe you're doing group calls, maybe you're doing Voxer, maybe you're doing, you know, they've got a membership, they've got a Facebook group, they've got this, all those little nitty gritty parts. That's not the end of it. Okay. You just need to lay down everything that's included, right? Like all the things that you get to help them get the support they need to do the thing. Right. But the how is also like, are you actually giving them enough support to get to where they need? Okay. One thing that I see in the coaching industry, um, not even so much with consultants, with coaching, consultants have a different avenue. So if I have any consultants in this group, which I think I have a couple, you guys are like experienced geniuses. And I actually love consulting a little bit better than coaching because you know so well the thing that they need to, to do this. Consulting is very much like, I am a genius. I'm an expert. I've been doing this for years and I know how to do this. So let me show you. Coaching is coming through to allow the other person, right, to create the answers that they need. But here's what I don't like to see in, in the how is that you kind of pack and put all this stuff in there that dilutes down your support and doesn't actually deliver the things that people are needing. Okay. And what I mean by that is sometimes I see programs that have like a bajillion deliverables, like like worksheets and like a bajillion like daily homework assignments and like all these little check-in videos and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, if that is actually necessary to get your clients to this island, awesome island, then go at it. But most of the time what I see is that people are jam packing their programs with bullshit that doesn't actually get them to awesome island. It's just fluff and people get confused. And hear me when I say this. If somebody was going to tell you, I have a three-step system for you to get 10K, or I have a three-step system for you to feel pain-free, or I have a three-step system or five-step system for you to lose 40 pounds, it's much more effective than I have a 20-point graph with 1,600 different things for you to add into your life, right? Like, it's so much, like, who's going to, what are you going to choose? You're going to choose a more streamlined system every single time, because as human beings, we want the most efficient, quickest route possible to get to where we want to be. 
that is just a physiological truth, okay? Like our bodies do it, we do it in our minds, and we want that in our experience. So don't just add a bunch of crap into your program because you want to bulk it up, okay? Don't do that. Don't do it. Really connect to like what are the essential pieces that they need, okay? And most of the time what I see is like, having somebody be there for you, right? Having accountability, having group calls, having one-on-one calls, absolutely essential, right? The modules, the mindset stuff that you're adding in, like, you know, meditations and all that kind of stuff, make sure it's actually supportive. Make sure it actually makes sense. Because I promise you, if it doesn't, they're not going to watch it. They're not going to go back and do it. And you're wasting your time creating a bunch of content that you could be using just to promote to free people, to, to clients, like for free and in your Facebook group or on your page, okay? And use it that way to attract more clients into your streamlined system, into your streamlined program, okay? And so do not fall into this trap of just jam packing your crap in there. I don't know how many times I've been in a program and it was just like a flood of information that I didn't need. I needed like three things. And I will say that to my, you know, mentors or whatever, like, hey, this was super great, but like, I didn't need all that. It's not helpful. Like it's confusing. And so the more you cloud that path, right. And I make them do this whole zigzag to get to where you need to go. It's not helpful. So really get clear on like, what are the essential steps that they need? Right. And create your membership or modules for that, as well as making sure it's, you also integrate a lot of space. Okay. It really depends on what the type of work you're doing. Um, you know, I think for business coaching, like for me, helping people get clients, there is a lot of like expansion that happens. So I like to have extra, extra support for people to make sure that they're getting to where they need to go. I think it's absolutely helpful. I don't think having one call a month is enough, right? (laughs) Definitely not. But depending on your line of work, it just really depends. And so you really want to get clear on what that is and what um, is most effective for them to get to where they need to go, right? Maybe it is a how-to strategy training on this thing. And maybe it is, you do need to have a meditation here because like, yeah, we need to clear, you know, a lot of this poverty consciousness mindset, of like being abundant and wanting to actually be successful, right? Whatever it is, make sure you know that it's clear and you're actually delivering the things that are actually necessary. And I promise you, clients are going to sign up with you way more than somebody who's jam-packed their program with a lot of fluff. Because when people sign up for that program, it doesn't actually deliver what they actually need because they get confused. Okay. And it becomes really disheartening. So that was the third thing was the how really streamlining it, making sure that framework that you're delivering to them really is what they're actually needing to get that success and not to make it just a bunch of BS crap. Okay. (laughs) Make sure it's actually effective and it's actually super serving. That's the other thing. Super, super serving. Okay. And the fourth thing here is what and where I find this to be really, really important as far as just making sure you have a safe container. So making sure you are clear on like, are you having open enrollment? Is this something that's always open and that you're constantly bringing people in? It start and end time, okay? That definitely depends on like how much time you're gonna be launching and like promoting your group or if you're always promoting that, making sure people know when and where they can actually join because once people start clicking into your why, into your what, what they're getting, they're ready to go. So make sure you have a system for them to come in. And you also want to be able to create a safe space. And so this is something also that I really wanted to talk about is in your line offer, you want to make sure that wherever you're hosting your, your, your calls or you're having um, that time with your clients, it really is promoting a safe environment. And so if, and I hear this with some of my clients that they really don't like social media. So maybe you want to create a um, group that offers outside of social media. There's mighty networks. So maybe you want to use a Slack channel. Okay. Maybe you want to, um, I don't know, maybe if you're like, uh, not so much like spiritual base, but it's more of like brass tacks. You want to create another framework, um, that really holds that space for them to have, um, connection and conversation okay especially if you have like a uh, group part of deliverable in your program and so making sure that you're clear on like is this open is this going to be like offered multiple times a year how do people client how do clients come in and then be prepared for that and here's what i mean by that is that like if you only offer this twice a year be prepared especially if you if you align this offer and the goal is to make it super magnetic so clients are just naturally drawn to your offers that you're prepared for the swarm. 
So most of us are worried that like, you're not going to be able to get anybody, you know, you're going to have one person or whatever. Sometimes that happens and that's not a failure. Okay. It just does everybody that happens to everybody. And that's okay. You still had one client. You still had two clients. You should celebrate that. But what happens when that client that offer is so clear and you just get a flood, do you have the capability to bring them in? Okay. And what I mean by that is like, make sure that you have a framework that works for you. So that means you're going to start offering this once a month, you know, if you need to, can you afford that energetically? Okay. Um, like for example, uh, for me, I had to dramatically change my mastermind around and hire more coaches so that we could support this new expansion level. And I realized that I can't do all of that by myself. Right. And so for you, it may not be hiring coaches, but it may be like, okay, so we're going to do a open enrollment, but like we start once a month, every month, right? Like that. And so make sure that you kind of get that clear for yourself so that you know how to work that around. Um, so that the clients that are following you can actually join your programs when they're ready. Cause that is exactly what happens. And they end up just flooding in all the time. And I promise you that happens, especially when your offer is aligned. Okay. One is the money. This is the money part. Now I really promote high ticket offers. I think they're the fastest way to grow and scale your business. I also promote funnels. Now, I don't believe that somebody who has no ad spend or no um, extra cash flow to focus on funnels first. I find that to be much more frustrating. Um, but if you go in knowing that, then that's fine. And you can definitely grow and scale your business with funnels easier. It's definitely more passive. But it's like, it's amazing. You can do it too. When you're focusing on high ticket offers, so let's focus on high ticket offers because this is what this is really about. You really want to make sure that this is a reflection of you and your work where you are right now. Now, people always ask me, like, Christine, what, like, what price should I put this at? Like, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> the answer is you got to tune in to where you are right now, what feels like for you. So here's kind of like the hilarious way that I actually price things for my, well, for my clients, depending on where they're at, is, you know, if you do have a daily rate, or an hourly rate of work that you already do, ta tally up like, okay, let's say you charge $100 an hour, or $50 an hour, tally up how many hours is in the program, how much hours it would take for you to create the content, how many hours it would take for you a month on average to support the group, to answer questions, to get on extra calls, to follow up on email, blah, 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 blah. Total it up, multiply it by your hourly rate and see what the number is. Most of the time when you see that number, my clients go, oh, that's really low. <laughs> So try a good, better, best on. Okay, this is all about alignment for you. And you can always change your price, guys. My first beta offer for group healing work was $200. And it felt great. There is no shame there, okay? And it quickly changed as the more I did that work because I was like, whoa, these, amazing, these ladies are getting amazing results. I'm just going to keep working with this and I'm going to change the price, okay? And so this is really about you feeling where you are right now. Maybe your high ticket offer is only $1,000. That is okay. There is nobody saying that you can't do that. But you're going to quickly feel in your field where that expansion is and how much energy you actually input and the type of clients you actually work with, okay? So that is really going to be about you and yourself to decide what that price is. I also like to make it as a pay in full price. Okay, so let's say it's $2,500, let's say it's $5,000, let's say it's $997, and then also offer a payment plan. Now, payment plans are like, okay, if your program is, you know, four months long, it's four payments of X amount of money, right? Really allow them to have that flexibility so that people who really are ready to join your program, maybe they don't have that all all that cash right up front, but they are still super aligned, they're still ready to work with, you're excited to work with them, and use that to create, say, hey, what if four payments of X money work for, feel free for you? And they will probably be like, yes, that is so much more helpful. Thank you so much. I'm ready to get started. Let's do this. Okay. And so really about you tuning in and seeing where you want to start and then grow from there, guys. Grow from where you are. Don't try to create a $10,000 offer if there's no way you could even say those words out of your mouth. Okay. The other way that I like to do this is try, try, the, try the price on. So if you're like, okay, $1,000, my program is $1,000. Easy to say, hard to say, too low, right? 
okay, my program is $2,500. <gasps> you do a little <gasps> in your chest when that happens. Okay, maybe that's a stretch. How about $2,000? Okay, $2,000 is good. I can do $2,000. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's maybe the change price nineteen ninety seven. Perfect. That feels even better. That's awesome. Let's do that. Okay, so really just try this on because you can like people buy shoes for like twenty five thousand dollars. You can sell your transformational work for twenty five hundred dollars. Okay, it's really just about value. It's really about what you provide and about the type of clients that you work with and the different layers. Okay, that you're creating. So for your high ticket offers again, really try on the price where you're now. Calculate your hourly rate into the actual total price of what you think. Does it feel too low? Do you need to raise it? Try on the price out loud. See how that feels in your body. Can you actually say it without going, it's $2,500, it's $5,000, right? And see what happens with that, okay? Also offer pay in full and offer a payment plan. Now, let's just recap a little bit because these are the most important parts of this offer of actually creating a really awesome, sustainable, like high ticket offer that really sells. Okay. So from the top, we talked about the, your why, why you're creating what you're creating, how this connects to your client's actual desire to get to awesome Island. Okay. And making sure that's actually what they want. Right. If I would say, Oh, I'm going to help my clients create automations to get leads. That's actually okay, but my clients really say, I want clients. I want to be making money. I want to be doing my deep mission. That's different, right? That, was, that wording is totally different than like, I want to lead gen and create funnels. <laughs> like, no, they'd be like, oh, not really. I just want to get clients, okay? So make sure you know what the why is for you creating that offer and aligns with your clients. Two, I'm going to talk about the what, right? This is all about your service, all the framework steps that get you to Awesome Island, making sure that makes sense, making sure it's aligned with what your clients are actually needing, and tailor it to them, okay? The other thing I forgot to say is that you can also make sure that, um, you know, you're allowing that personalized coaching, you know, because every client is different, absolutely. So, you know, maybe this is your basic framework, and add in a couple of things for Sally or for, you know, whoever. Three, you want to talk about your um, how. These are all your deliverables. Like I have this many Zoom calls. I have this group. I have this membership, blah, 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 all those things. And then again, like I said, make sure it's streamlined. Don't just add fluff to add fluff to make it feel better because this girl has this thing that does all these things, okay? Do not compare yourself. We're all in different places in our business. There is always going to be clients for you. Always hear me. So when you say your three, uh, your how, you have your three steps or your maybe it's five steps or maybe seven steps or whatever it is, understand that's just streamlined and you can always personalize that for them as well. But make sure it's not fluff and it's not BS and it's actually giving them what they need and you're actually serving them deeply. Okay, making sure you're giving them more than enough for them to get to where they need to go, but you're not clouding the framework to get there. Um, four was understanding when and where that you're creating the offer. So are you doing open enrollment? Are you offering this once a month? Are you only doing this, thing, this quarterly, whatever? And do you have a system when the swarm happens? Don't focus on, will I ever get a client for this? Focus on when I'm flooded with clients, can I, is there a system? Maybe you need to create a wait list. Maybe you need to have open enrollment and they're always rolling in and they get extra bonuses in between. I don't know. However you want to structure it, that's really up to you, okay? And then of course, making a safe space for those group communities that feels aligned for you. So if you don't want it to be a Facebook group, maybe it's Slack, maybe it's Money Networks, right? Understanding what that looks like. And then finally, number five is price. Now price is again, is all about you creating a number that is inherently valuable to where you are right in this moment. Now you don't have to start with a $10,000 offer. You don't have to start with a $5,000 offer. You start where you are. And go from there. Like I told you guys, my first beta launch group program was 200 bucks. Okay. And it quickly changed from there. And I was so happy to do it. And there's no shame in that guys. There's no shame. If your, your high ticket offer is only a thousand bucks, it's all a thousand bucks. That's fine. It's okay. And let yourself grow and move and expand from there. Trying to push yourself to get to where you think you need to be, to be like X girl over here is not helpful. So start where you are and grow from there. Um, that is basically the essential aspects of this training guys, the homework for you. And I want to see everybody share this. Like what is the essential piece of your offering that, you know, your clients really need so that, that, um, that how framework, like that piece that like clients really need to know. 
and they, or maybe if you've had clients to your program, the thing that always blew their mind, like, wow, she actually taught me how to, um, you know, get clients organically without ads or, oh, she taught me how to like create these boundaries in a way that feels good by still, but also still being able to have a, have a relationship. Or maybe she did taught me how to lose weight without even having to think about dieting and eat all my favorite foods. Like whatever that is, write that down and share it in the group. I would love to hear what that is for all of you. And next week we're going to talk about um, the actual, let me just double check. Yeah, we're talking about sustainable offer that sells. And so we're going to actually go into the selling part of your offer. So you have a sustainable offer, we've created it, but how do we sell that to clients? How do we sell that on social media? How do we sell that in um, our email? How do you actually do that piece and take all of the things that we've created in this past two weeks and actually put that out there into the world? Okay, so I hope to see you guys next week and let me know if this was helpful. I would love to hear your thoughts and share your most amazing how piece, that framework piece that your clients love to hear. And we'll talk to you all later. Thank you.